We begin with breaking news that could affect your job, your retirement, your wallet. America is getting slammed. The Dow set a record today, and there's nothing good about it. The Dow was off 800 points. That's, we've not seen a minus eight before in history. Bank meltdowns and the nightmare on Wall Street taking its toll on Americans everywhere. You'd have to be an idiot not to be worried about the economy. This should not have happened. This was an avoidable, preventable situation we're in today. This was not a, a, a Gustav or an Ike. This was a man-made problem. Everyone's asking today how we got to this point. It's important to understand this was not by accident. The Bush administration's economic policies have been a disaster. We've seen unemployment rise. We've seen real wages go down. The fact is the folks that are out there making 30, 40, 50,000 bucks a year are having a hard time making their books balance. And now with this, uh, this meltdown, their retirement is at risk of losing their retirement and their homes are at risk of losing their homes. We're paying record prices for gas, for groceries, health care. That didn't happen yesterday. Millions of families are losing their homes to foreclosure or seeing their home equity disappear. This administration has failed to take the steps necessary to protect both Main Street and Wall Street. The schemers, the manipulators, the Enrons, the subprime mortgage packagers, the oil market speculators, the credit default swap artists, they all found a friend in the Bush administration. It's been just a lack of attention to protect the American public. It started with the housing crisis and seven times Democrats try to solve it and seven times the Republicans filibuster. Reserving the right to object. I feel compelled to object. Mr. President, reserving the right to object. I'm left with uh, little choice but to continue to object. 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 I object. John McCain, up until two weeks ago, was saying the fundamentals of the economy are fine. The president has repeated that over and over again. They've said that the country's doing well. Which country are they talking about? If you are in touch with the families that are struggling, I don't think those words could ever come out of your mouth. They didn't want to admit the truth. And the reason is because they've been pushing deregulation. And it's because of deregulation that we find ourselves in this mess. Our friends on the other side of the aisle have made deregulation their mantra. They've been proud of their efforts to take away the rules, to take away the cop on the beat. And essentially, Wall Street has been drunk on Republican deregulation. Now, once they realize they can no longer say the fundamentals of the economy are strong because businesses are going out and all these problems are happening, they come to us the last minute and ask for a $700 billion blank check. The plan we got from the White House was a three-page plan that gave unfettered discretion to the Secretary of Treasury. One person controlling $700 billion with no controls, restrictions, oversight. We're not giving the same people that got us into this mess a blank check on behalf of the American taxpayer? No way. We're not going to do that. And as a result, over these last two weeks, Madam President, we have put together a piece of legislation that gives us much more heightened protection. So we have negotiated through the Congress on a bipartisan basis a better alternative that installs taxpayer protections, asserts oversight, and maintains greater accountability. Now we have a strong piece of legislation that closes in that responsibility, that provides for real accountability, that provides for genuine oversight, and that provides for the benefit to actually flow down to real American homeowners. I'm proud of what we were able to do uh, to make sure that we were looking after the real people in America that are shouldering the responsibility for supporting this government. We stick up for Main Street when the Republicans just kind of walk away. This is a fight that uh, has gone on now, not just for the last couple of weeks, but for a, a number of years during the Bush administration. You know, we as Democrats are always the ones fighting for the middle class. That's what we've done since day one. Whether it's raising the minimum wage so a mom doesn't have to work three jobs, uh, whether it's getting children's health insurance which uh, the president vetoed, John McCain voted against. 
uh, whether it's making sure women have equal pay for equal work so they can afford to maybe work only one job. We've substantially increased Pell Grants. We've substantially increased LIHEAP programs so that people can be warm in their homes in the Northeast this winter. But there are a lot of other areas where we've been fought to a standstill by a true conspiracy of obstruction by the Republican Senate leadership. We have very serious challenges, no question about it. We've had those challenges before and America has overcome them, and we will again. But we won't do it by having a minority in the Congress uh, with 95 filibusters. We need more voices here in the Congress on the side of progressive change. Who come there to do the right thing for our kids, for our environment, to fight global warming, to create jobs, to protect workers. These are the things we're supposed to do. If there's one thing that the people that I represent keep saying is uh, we need some changes. And I think if we change a few more things around here, the president and a few more members of Congress, I think we're going to be able to accomplish a great deal.